Number 251. As those wines which flow from the first dreading of the grape are sweeter and better than those forced out by the press, which gives them the roughness of the husk and stone, so are those doctrines best and sweetest which flow from a gentle crush of the scriptures, and are not wrung into controversies and commonplaces. Number 252. Discretion of speech is more than eloquence, and to speak agreeably to him with whom we deal, is more than to speak in good words or in good order. A good continued speech, without a good speech of interlocution, shows slowness, and a good reply, or second speech, without a good settled speech, showeth shallowness and weakness. Number 253. Speech of a man's self ought to be seldom and well chosen. I knew one was wont to say in scorn, he must needs be a wise man, he speaks so much of himself. There is but one case wherein a man may commend himself with good grace, and that is in commending virtue in another, especially if it be a virtue whereunto himself pretendeth. Number 254. It is without all controversy that learning doth make the minds of men gentle, amiable, and pliant to government, whereas ignorance makes them churlish, thwarting, and mutinous and the evidence of time doth clear this assertion, considering that the most barbarous, rude, and unlearned times have been most subject to tumults, seditions, and changes. Number 255. Alchemy may be compared to the man who told his sons he had left them gold buried somewhere in his vineyard, where they by digging found no gold, but by turning up the mould, about the roots of their vines, procured a plentiful vintage. So the search and endeavours to make gold have brought many useful inventions and instructive experiments to light. Number 256. Founders and senators of states and cities, law givers, extirpers of tyrants, fathers of the people, and other eminent persons in civil government, were honoured but with titles of worthies or demigods, whereas such as were inventors and authors of new arts, endowments, and commodities towards man's life were ever consecrated among the gods themselves. Number 257. Those Spaniards in Mexico who were chased of the Indians tell us what to do with our goods in our extremity. They being to pass over a river in their flight, as many as cast away their gold swam over safe, but some, more covetous, keeping their gold, were either drowned with it, or overtaken and slain by the savages, you have received. Now learn to give. Number 258. Mahomet made the people believe that he would call a hill to him, and from the top of it offer up his prayers for the observers of his law. The people assembled. Mahomet called the hill to come to him, again and again, and when the hill stood still, he was never a whit abashed, but said, If the hill will not come to Mahomet, Mahomet will go to the hill. Number 259. Men seem neither to understand their riches nor their strength, of the former they believe greater things than they should, of the latter much less. Self-reliance and self-denial will teach a man to drink out of his own cistern, and eat his own sweet bread, and to learn and labor truly to get his living, and carefully to expend the good things committed to his trust. Number 260. A man that is young in years may be old in hours, if he have lost no time but that happeneth rarely. Generally, youth is like the first cogitations, not so wise as the second. For there is a youth in thoughts as well as in ages, and yet the invention of young men is more lively than that of old, and imaginations stream into their minds better, and, as it were, more divinely. Number 261. I cannot call riches better than the baggage of virtue. The Roman word is better, impedimenta. For as the baggage is to an army, so is riches to virtue. It cannot be spared nor left behind, but it hindereth the march, yea, and the care of it sometimes looseth or disturbeth the victory. Of great riches there is no real use, except it be in the distribution, the rest is but conceit. Number 262. It deserves to be considered that boldness is ever blind, for it sees not dangers and inconveniences whence it is bad in counsel though good in execution. The right use of bold persons, therefore, is that they never command in chief, but serve as seconds, under the direction of others. For in counsel it is good to see dangers, 
and in execution not to see them unless they are very great. Number 263. Who taught the parrot his welcome? Who taught the raven in a drought to throw pebbles into a hollow tree where she espied water, that the water might rise so as she might come to it? Who taught the bee to sail through such a vast sea of air, and to find the way from a flower in a field to her hive? Who taught the ant to bite every grain of corn that she bereath in her hill, lest it should take root and grow? Number 264. In all other human gifts and passions, though they advance nature, yet they are subject to excess, but charity alone admits no excess. For so we see, by aspiring to be like God in power the angels transgressed and fell, by aspiring to be like God in knowledge man transgressed and fell, but by aspiring to be like God in goodness or love, neither man nor angel ever did or shall transgress. For unto the imitation we are called. Number 265. Men fear death, as children fear the dark, and as that natural fear in children is increased by frightful tales, so is the other. Groans, convulsions, weeping friends, and the like show death terrible, yet there is no passion so weak but conquers the fear of it, and therefore death is not such a terrible enemy. Revenge triumphs over death, love slights it, honor aspires to it, dread of shame prefers it grief flies to it, and fear anticipates it. Number 266. Talkers and futile persons are commonly vain and credulous with all. For he that talketh what he knoweth will also talk what he knoweth not, therefore set it down that a habit of secrecy is both politic and moral, and in this part it is good, that a man's face gives his tongue leave to speak, for the discovery of a man's self by the tracts of his countenance is a great weakness and betraying by how much it is many times more marked and believed than a man's words. Number 267. He that questioneth much shall learn much, and content much, but especially if he apply his questions to the skill of the persons whom he asketh, for he shall give them occasion to please themselves in speaking, and himself shall continually gather knowledge, but let his questions not be troublesome, for that is fit for a poser and let him be sure to leave other men their turn to speak, nay, if there be any that would reign and take up all the time, let them find means to take them off, and bring others on comma as musicians used to do with those that dance to long galliards. If you dissemble sometimes your knowledge of that you are thought to know, you shall be thought, another time, to know that you know not. <laughs>